That Flag by Tamika Fryer Brown. Illustrations by Nicholas Smith. Bianca and I are almost twins. We're the same in so many ways. We both wear our hair in braids. We spend independent reading time together. We play Foursquare better than anyone in our class. We are inseparable. She's my best friend, but only at school. I'm not allowed to go to her house, even though we live on the same street. Kira, mom says whenever I go outside, please stay where I can see you. Then she shoots a look that means don't go anywhere near their yard. I know why. It's because of that flag. Mom and dad say it's a hate flag, a symbol of violence and oppression. Bianca's parents told her it's a heritage flag, a celebration of courage and pride. What I know is I can't go to any parties or sleepovers at her house, and I can't invite her to mine. At bedtime, before my parents tuck me in, I remember my field trip form. It's for the Southern Legacy Museum, Dad says. They have a new exhibit. Mind if I tag along? I don't mind. Dad is a lot of fun. He even buys me souvenirs sometimes. Sure, I say. Mom and Dad hug me tight for an extra long time. On field trip day, once we're off the bus, Bianca and I link hands. We wait for Miss Grayson to call our names. Oh no, she's assigned us to different groups. When I start to frown, Dad tugs my braids, makes a face, and smiles. I can't help but smile back. I'm glad Dad's here with me. After walking around for a while, we see a red, white, and blue sign. Stars and bars. Dad takes my hand. This is something we need to see. First, we see a frilly dress from antebellum days. I picture myself wearing it and giggle. <laughs> It'd look pretty silly. There's a cotton gin with lots of little puffy plants around it. Wish we could pick some off, I say. Dad glances but doesn't say anything. When we come to an auction block, Dad freezes. He's not smiling at all. Neither am I. In silence, Dad and I walk to a glass case filled with old photographs. I see soda fountains, poodle skirts, gigantic cars with fins, dogs and water hoses, teenagers crying in the streets, scary men in white gowns holding torches and flags. That flag. Kira! Bianca runs up to me. I've been looking for you everywhere. She throws her arms around my neck, but I don't hug her back. What's wrong? She asks. My throat feels tight. I'm not sure what to say. I just point to the pictures in the case. Then I walk away. Back on the bus, Dad and I sit up front behind the driver. I stare out the window, remembering those pictures and that flag, my best friend's flag. Later that night, my family and I talk for a long time. They tell me things they've never told me about before. About the scary things my grandpa saw when he was just a kid. About grandma being spat on for trying to go to school. About mom and dad getting called bad names and chased by people in a truck. About the Freedom Riders. About Selma. About the Charleston Nine. We talk about the things black people have to do every day to stay safe. After our talk, I feel scared, confused, and mad, but mostly I'm sad. At school the next day, I wait for Bianca to say something about the pictures. She talks about her puppy instead. I guess those pictures didn't bother her. I guess we're not the same. I guess we're not best friends after all. During reading time, I read by myself. At recess, I jump rope alone. When Miss Grayson asks what we learned from our field trip, I say, the Confederate flag is racist. That's not true, Bianca cries. It stands for Southern pride. The Confederacy, Miss Grayson says, fought a war to keep black people enslaved. 
their battle flag is still used by hate groups who want white people to rule. No, Bianca shakes her head. Why would my family fly a flag like that? I don't know, Miss Grayson answers. But it's a good question to ask. I'm trying to beat my grandpa at chess when I hear grandma cry, Lord have mercy! Mom turns up the news. It's news none of us wants to hear. Two black people were shot in their own front yard by three white men. They show pictures of the men on TV. They're standing in front of that flag. That hate flag. My family and I go to a candlelight vigil to honor the couple that was killed. I look at the crowd. I can't believe my eyes. Bianca and her parents are here. I did not expect her family to come. I wonder why they did. Coming home, we see a new house flying that flag. It makes my heart hurt, so I look away. We pass Bianca's house. They've taken theirs down. I can't stop staring. I wonder why they did. As the late bell rings the next morning at school, Bianca passes me a note. You were right. I haven't spoken to Bianca for days. No sharing books or playing four square at recess. But now, that flag is gone from her house. So maybe things can be different. Maybe we can be friends after all. I don't know. But I'm willing to see. The end. Pause to read.